WFD TV presents Gentle Giant with Pam Minnick and Katie Kaufman. Gentle Giants brought you more than two dozen stories literally from coast to coast. From the draft horses at the University of California at Davis to the World Percher and Congress in Massachusetts. You're right, Pam. There were so many great memories. It was hard for us to choose. So we reached out to all of you and our Facebook followers to have you choose your top favorites. We'll begin with the top 10 countdown when Gentle Giants begins. Welcome back to the best of Gentle Giants. It was great to learn what the viewers found to be their favorite shows. And while every episode this past year received some votes, today we'll give you a look at what got the most votes, what you picked as the top 10. We begin on the West Coast at the University of California at Davis, where a pair of Pertrons share the campus with thousands of bicycles and students. It's really cool to see photos from over a hundred years ago of people with draft horses in front of this very barn and so when we drive around campus I feel like that's honoring their memory, honoring the people who started this school and the reasons why it was started because it was originally founded for agricultural purposes. That's also really important and we want to take care of our horses because they really are the lifeblood of our animals a labor of love for us to keep this up to par. We want everything to be spectacular because every day when I look at those horses out in the arena, I want them to look top notch. So it's been a way to, to bring back the focus of equines. You know, a lot of people on campus are stopping and taking pictures and, and Facebook and it's just, it makes us remember what it was like to be on the campus when it originated. Number nine is Gentle Giant's visit to LaPorte, Indiana, the largest 4-H draft horse program in the nation, where the Morzinski family is developing young teamsters. Right, Pam. Award-winning driver Stephanie Ruppels judged the show, which had almost 100 entries. In the class, I like to point out something positive that they do so that they have some encouragement and also something that they can work on for the next time. Obviously, they're the future of our industry and to get them headed in the right direction at such a young age is wonderful. It works for my family um, and I hope my, my daughter and my son are able to keep going the way I, the passion, you gotta have passion and I hope they do too. If you want to grow up and be in the big hitches, you got to know how to decorate because it's going to help out the hitches and my cousin even got called out. They, the hitches came through and they said, does anyone know how to main roll? So I feel like it's a really important skill to know. It's really fun because then they just prance around. Most of the time they prance around after they're pretty because they know that they've got something. I say you got to believe in yourself and you got to try doing it. Even if when you get frustrated, you got to keep working because your leaders aren't going to let you stop. They're going to make you keep going. We both <laughs> fell in love with Lily and all the youngsters. We did, Pam. Now moving on, there are no motorized vehicles and more than 300 horses on Mackinac Island in Michigan, which is number eight. Horses themselves here, they saturate the entire society, okay? We don't get our grain delivered by truck. Um, we use horses for everything. These are things that the horses actually did. Um, they delivered freight in the cities. They, they delivered the groceries. They, they delivered their own feed. Um, they also haul the tourists. They haul people. You'll see horses doing everything from hauling all the food to all the restaurants, the construction materials to any building that's going on. We have horses here that are taxi horses, which are horses that can cover ground and be pretty prompt about their work. We have horses here that are what we call utility horses. A utility horse is like a utility tractor. It's usually a crossbred horse between a draft horse and some kind of light horse, often a standard bred. And those are horses that can both work with some speed, but also take a load. And so we use those horses on uh, most of our tour type carriages. 
And then we have one of the very biggest of draft horses to do our heavy work. Number seven is the 2015 Tournament of Roses Parade, and no gentle giants would be complete without a feature on the Budweiser Clydesdales. Just getting the horses in shape, it's getting, getting to a six mile parade to pull the wagon through there. Uh, this year we have three new horses that they've gone through our training program, but they've only been out with us probably about a month and a half. So it's going to be interesting, they've, they've gone through all the training processes, but nothing really prepares them to, to what they're going to see with over a million people on the streets. The closest thing we can do at the training facility, we start them out in pairs with an older horse and then we go from pairs to fours to six to eight. It's a 10 month process and they have the brewery, the trucks and that, it's just that the noise level is what's going to happen. So what we'll do is we'll put an old horse next to them and uh, we'll bring them in as we go. And when we first started them, we only put one horse in at a time, then we put two in, then we put three. And so this, this parade, we're going to try all three new ones. Stay with us, we'll continue the countdown when the best of Gentle Giants returns. Welcome back to the best of Gentle Giants. The Guinness Book of World Records tallest horse is Big Jake, owned by Jerry Gilbert in Wisconsin. We had a chance to ride this Gentle Giant. Here's number six with Big Jake. Are you gonna help me, Jerry? Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah, one, two, okay. oh my gosh. Let him go. <laughs> yep. Team. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I need one. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know what's crazy is it's really not that bouncy. He moves really great. Holy smokes. Okay. Craziness. That Jerry Gilbert, he knew what he was doing when he said, get up on Big Jake. This is an experience I could not leave Wisconsin without attempting. Riding Big Jake was so much fun and all of you enjoyed that show. I think we enjoyed it quite a bit too, <laughs> Pam. We called upon our great viewers to send their photos for full files and got great pictures of baby Percherons, Clydesdales, Belgians, and more. Utopia Ice's Encore, better known as Cory, is the second generation to be raised at Utopia Percherons. Cory was the first or maiden foal out of Utopia's Cracker Jack surprise they call April. The Lynches hope to keep Cory as a potential hitch horse. Because he's been shown and handled a lot as a foal, he'll likely be much easier to train when the time comes. They'll begin to do a lot of ground driving in the bidding rig and then hook him a few times as a two-year-old. Then they'll leave him alone till he's about three to start really training him to harness, usually single first and then double. Express Clydesdales added one more rare black Clyde to their barn when Shady Maple's Peggy Ann gave birth to this colt on March 7th. Owned by Bob Funk and his Express Employment Professionals, one of the top staffing companies in the U.S., the colt is EX Decker's prize. And he sure looks like a prize. The Express Clydesdale Barn is in Yukon, Oklahoma, and it's open to the public. You can be sure this little guy will be getting a lot of attention as he grows up to hopefully find his spot on the hitch in a few years. 
Number four is the Gentle Giant Six Horse Hitch Finals, sanctioned by the North American Six Horse Hitch Classic Series. Here's a look at the final round drive off and the results. If anything, the drivers are asking for more than they did the first heat. They are. This is when it all comes down to those finite details, and the scorecards are separated by half of a point. Oh, just such minute details, you're right. Take a look at Country Lane Belgians. Man, they are still showing their strength. Kyle Forsyth is taking a look at what's going on in the arena. And Freeman Yoder and his fiance Katie aboard. Freeman is such a great guy. He's a tremendous horseshoer. Always does a wonderful job with those Pertrons. Can't help but look at what the assistant drivers are looking at as they're going around the arena. They're keeping an eye with five hitches in the arena. Spacing is important. And it looks like Travis Shaw is coming in for the lineup. He will stop. Tim jumps off to get everything lined up for him. There comes Country Lane. Oops, they missed the turn. They're going to have to swing a little bit wider here. That You don't see that happen very often. No, that is very surprising that Kyle missed the lineup. And don't think the judge didn't notice that. He was supposed to come in on the right side of Ames Pertrons, and for whatever reason, he couldn't make that turn. As we see the rest of the hitches lineup, last into the lineup of these five in the drive off was Blue Ribbon Days. And we will bring all 12 hitches into the arena as we see who will be the new six horse hitch champion. There comes Goodell Clydesdales last into the ring. This is 72 tons of horsepower inside the Jim Norick Arena. Okay, now it's down to three, and Country Lane Belgians comes in in third place. Obviously, that lineup problem possibly cost them, and now it's down to two. The reserve champions for the North American Six Horse Hitch Classic Series National Championships is Ames, Percherons, Travis Shaw at the Lions, and the back-to-back -back national champions, Blue Ribbon Days with Dean Woodbury. I think Dean was actually looking stunned when he heard Travis's <laughs> hitch called out as second place, because when you're out there in the arena, you truly don't know which way the judge is gonna lean. And I know that the Ames family is thrilled with that, as are the Clevey and Day families. Albert Clevey is in California judging another horse show. I can't believe he's gonna miss his horses winning another year back to back. It's such a family affair, not only for the Day family and the Cleveys, but also the Woodberries. Dean's wife, Kelly, his children, they all make this happen. Stay with us, the top three best of Gentle Giants is coming up. Welcome back to the best of Gentle Giants. It's time for the top three stories from 2015 as determined by you, our viewers, and our fans on Facebook. Number three was our visit to Schaefer Belgians in South Dakota. And we have to admit, we were in heaven out in the pasture with all those mares and foals. It's very important to us with uh, the amount of foals that we uh, um, produce every year that we always have integrity in that breeding system. So we do ear tag our young colts uh, when they're born. We put a tag in. That tag will represent the year that they're born and the number on that animal. And that tag will, will tell us who that animal is, the year that it was born, as well as uh, sometimes they'll be color coded so we know exactly what sire they're out as well when we're going to be making sure that we're, we're doing different breeding lines. Now when the colts are born, they all get tagged. They get tagged with a green tag. On that tag is two numbers. One is the year. So this year that there will be a little written number 15 to show they were born this year. Then they will have a number and they are in sequence as to time of birth. So a, a colt that carries, it carries a tag of 15 and has a, t a number of 21 on it means it was the 21st colt born that year. We tag the male horses, the stud colts, in the left ear. We tag the female horses in the right ear. Also in South Dakota, near Sioux Falls, we paid a visit to Macross and Boys Ranch where heavy horses are changing young men's lives. Uh, not only do we have about 70 boys on any given day, help more than 250 boys a year, uh, we also have more than 40 horses out here. Uh, it takes a lot of dollars to keep that going. Uh, when people see the hitch and they see the awesome things that we do out here with horses and with the boys, uh, they want to support this mission and, and that makes all the difference. 
Probably one of my favorite horses out here is Prince. And right when I came out here, it was the first horse that ran up and first horse that I seen and just liked him ever since. It just takes a lot of responsibility to take care of him. It made me feel better about myself knowing that I can do things. Everyone wants to see the big horses when they come out to Macross and Boys Ranch. I've been working here for 12 years and one of the things that people tell me time and time again is how the horses have changed lives out here. I had a mom tell me just this morning that Macrossan's gentle giants out here changed her son's life. And she said, I can never repay you. Keep inspiring those boys. It's hard to explain how the horses do this magical thing that they do. Um, it's one of those things that you have to see for yourself. I don't know exactly how the magic happens, but it does. And those big, gentle giants make big changes in the lives of our boys. I think Winston Churchill said it best when he said, there's something about the outside of a horse that's good for the inside of a man. We're happy to say that after our story ran on RFD-TV, it created many new donors for Macross and Boys Ranch, including a generous gift from Reba McIntyre, who is a fan of Gentle Giants. You just never know who our fans are these days. That's right. <laughs> I guess it's no surprise that the viewers found our driving in the Celebrity Obstacle Competition at the World Percheron Congress as much fun as we did. Here's number one. That end turn was a little tight though. <laughs> this is kind of stressful. Oh, yeah, when well, you're sitting here, just relax so that it's there. Yeah. And when we leave here, just go up that way and then just make a real wide. wide turn and you come right So, in do you say whoa? Yeah. Oh, you do? Uh, when you need to? Yeah. Okay. Hey. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Right up. Are you ready? Hey. Hey. Oh, she is going to run the course alone. This could be the advantage. Would you cheer Dean. on this team? Dean. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Now stay right towards the wall. Stay right over here. Over here. They know the course. Stay wide. I'm trying to stay, stay wide. wide. Stay wide. Stay wide. <laughs> well, <it's really> <laughs> Which one? Right here, right here, right here. Oh no, we're gonna go over here, we're gonna go over here. <laughs> 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 thankful for the Cleavy and Day families of Blue Ribbon Days for letting us take the lines of their world champion Percherons. And to driver Dean Woodbury for the confidence he had. Well, he had a lot of confidence in you. Me, not so much with that imaginary emergency break, but I sure had fun. <laughs> he was pressing on it. He was bracing and it was fun to watch and fun for all of you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you right back here next time on Gentle Giants. And in the meantime, you can always see what's new on our Facebook page. Gentle Giants is brought to you in part by Total Feeds, and with me is Dr. Harry Anderson. 
there's a lot of ways that you save money by feeding total feeds. And one of the ways you've been able to pass on the savings to us, the customers, is by your plain white bags. How did you come up with that idea? Well, I designed that bag very carefully, Pam. Uh, but uh, I decided early on that, that really the bag, to me, never made any difference whether I was going to buy a feed with a picture or not. So I just decided to, to look around and shop for the most economical and the toughest bag there is on the market. It is one of the cheapest bags you can buy cost-wise because there's no frills on it. And if you buy them in quantity, that saves some money. And like I tell people, I want to put the cost of my feed inside the bag, not on the outside. Mm -hmm.